Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile. This is the FIO FH9, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. I want to thank Jesse, a subscriber and friend of the channel, for providing the FIO FH9 for a review. Do greatly appreciate it. Jesse, you rock. Okay, so the FIO FH9, this is a $600 IEM. It has a 13.6 millimeter beryllium DLC dynamic driver and six balanced armatures. It is semi open. It also includes something called S turbo bass. It has three interchangeable sound filters, three interchangeable cable terminations, titanium shells, MMCX connectors, impedance of 18 ohms, sensitivity of 108 decibels, and a frequency response of 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz, and a high-res sticker. Okay, so FIO FH9. Pretty standard FIO unboxing. I'm not going to open the box, but I'm going to show you the accessories. So you get a little metal plate that says FIO on it, and then tells you that... Red is bass, green is treble, and black is balanced for the filters. I am not going to take them off. As you can see, they are extremely thin, very hard to put on, and very easy to lose. You also get your cable terminations, which are interchangeable, 4.4, 2.5, and then 3.5. You also get a cleaning tool and a magnetic cable management strap. Very, very strong magnets. You also get a carrying case, which is leather. It says Fio, born for music on each side. Opens up and you got a little bit of a like strap to hold everything in place. Very nice. A little bit big, not easy for the pockets, but good for the bag. Then you get a bunch of tips. They do include, include spin fit tips, which is a nice touch. Also, you get all of these. So you have bass, vocal, balanced, some dual flange, foams, and then what they call ear fit. And I found that the tips do make a difference. Uh, they have different tendencies about them. For example, the bass ones do just that. They enhance the bass. They do make it a little bit thicker. And they somewhat kind of make the treble laid back. And I found that the mids were slightly recessed just a little bit. Vocal tip. The vocal tips definitely bring out the mids. And it can have a little bit of upper mids lower treble shout and aggression and i didn't mind it but it was just a little too intense for my taste and then you have the balanced which is what is <laughs> what it's called balance it has the best control and best cohesion in my opinion throughout the range and i found that it worked uh the most pleasing with my ears and so that is the tip that i used you have dual flange dual flange sounded very similar to the balance tips foam tips i did not use and then the ear fit tips i really did enjoy the fit of them and they sounded very similar to the balance tip as well as long as with also the spin fit but i found that the balanced ones just fit the best and it was what i preferred Okay, so that's it for all the accessories. You get a ton of them. And we'll talk about the filters in a moment. So you also get your IEM and the cable. Now the cable does connect with MMCX. And the interesting part is that this section right here, which connects to the IEM itself, this part here is also titanium. So it can be a little bit hard on the front part of your ear, depending on how it fits. The shell is titanium and very well built, feels sturdy, 
but it is heavy. Do you notice that it has a decent length of a nozzle? It's not the longest, but it's also not the shortest. It's got an okay angle to it. Take the tip off here. You can see the filter and you just kind of spin it and they come off and then spin it back on. Do wish that the angle was a little bit more protruding and also that the length was a little bit longer. Overall, I find that the heft of them and the design of them is a little bit hard for the ear. I do like the semi-open look though. That is really cool to, to see and it's rare. But when you put them in your ears, at least for me, the only part that's really holding them in is the ear hooks and this part. The body and shell design is flat, doesn't have any type of ergonomics to fit in my ear and the heft of it. So it's always kind of pulling them and leaning them. And I get a lot of strain on this section of my ear. And then with that titanium part for the connection of the cable, that presses right here. And I just get a very uncomfortable fit. And I can wear them for about 30 to 45 minutes and then they're begging to come out and I have to give my ears a pretty significant time of uh, just recovery before I can put them back in. They're just not a very comfortable fit for me. They remind me a lot of the fit of something like a Tri i3 Pro or the Ico OH10, where they're just a little heavy and just not really well designed. And I just they just didn't fit my ears very well whatsoever. Cable-wise, nice and soft, a little bit thick. The connector and also the split is a little bit on the heavy side. And so that also adds to the comfort problems. The FIO uh, FH9 is really easy to drive. I didn't find it to be picky at all on sources. I found that it worked well no matter what dongle I had on it and whether I used it with a DAP or desktop. It worked well, had no issues. It didn't really um, seem to be bothered by anything. It is a little bit on the hissy side and somewhat sensitive on higher output impedance devices. So you may need to use an IFI IE match, um, but for the most part, had no issues driving it whatsoever. As far as the filters, now the filters do make a difference. I found that the base filter tames down the treble and the mids, and it comes in being a little laid back, very lush, warm, and kind of just overall, just a little on the boring side for me. I didn't mind it, but I wish it had a little bit more uh, uh, an excitement, a little bit more energy. Treble. Treble does total opposite. Uh, treble really boosts the mids and the treble. And they are too much. They're excessively uh, bright and hot. And also it affected the resolution. It became kind of harsh and gritty and it just wasn't very pleasing. And I found that that was the most fatiguing uh, setup was using the treble filter. Balanced is kind of a mixture between bass and treble. And that's the one that I preferred. I preferred it as it had it the, the most accurate uh, sound signature in my opinion. And it was the, the most pleasing in the mids and in the treble. And it had a good balance of energy, sparkle, and it did well with detail retrieval and resolution. So all sonic impressions will be done with the balance tip and the balanced filter. Before we get into the sonic impressions, I do want to thank my supporters through YouTube memberships and Patreon. Do greatly appreciate everything that you provide to the channel through your daily and monthly uh, donations. I know it's a sacrifice, especially in these days, uh, 
and I appreciate everything that you give back to the channel and all funds that come into the channel are used to enhance the reviews, whether it be lighting or microphones or something else that you see here on screen. Also, it could be gear that is used in the review process as a reference product or gear to review and compare. So I do greatly appreciate everything that is provided by my supporters through Patreon and YouTube. Much appreciated. If you're interested in becoming a supporter of the channel, please check out the links. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Okay, so the sound of the FIO FH9. So the FIO FH9 has a very pleasing and fun, engaging sound. It's not something that is going to be used as a reference or as a monitor, but it also is not something that's just stuck in fun mode. It's kind of the all-in-one, jack-of-all-trades uh, type of IEM. Bass. Bass is prominent. Bass is big. Bass is dominant. There's a lot of authority, a lot of power in the bass of the FIO FH9. It's fun. It's engaging. It's well-controlled, very well-detailed, very good resolving and I really do enjoy it. It's a it's a very natural sounding bass. There's a lot of punch, slam, girth, body weight to it. And overall, it's just a very engaging bass. Does bleed a little bit into the lower mids. But overall, I find that it is a very fun and engaging and accurately tonally correct bass. The mids. The mids do get a little bit of that bleed from the upper bass, adds in a little bit of body, adds in a little bit of note weight, and just overall a little bit of warmth to the sound, and they just sound full, lush, and engaging. And there's a good separation and good isolation of instruments and vocalists. There's good note weight and just overall a, a natural tendency to the vocalists and instruments. and Upper mids are a little bit elevated, and just when you use the treble filter, do they become a little bit too forward and a little bit too sibilant um, and somewhat harsh. But overall, using either the bass filter or the balance filter, they have this nice tone and timbre about them and just this overall just engagement and pleasantness to the sound. Treble. Treble is a little suspect, and it kind of depends on which filter you're using. Treble filter, you're definitely going to get trouble, and it can be a little bit hot. It's going to be a little bit peaky, and there's moments of harshness, and just a little bit, little bit too much treble, and it gets into unnatural sounds. Whereas with the balanced and the bass filters, it's more controlled, has good air and extension, and it just sounds accurate with the balance filter. The bass filter, it's a little bit more on the laid back and chill side. I do uh, appreciate the overall sound signature of the FH9. I find that it's fun and engaging. It's not really a reference sound or something that I would use as a monitor, but for just an everyday carry, enjoying my music and just being pleasing, yes, this has a very nice frequency and sound signature overall. And you can tweak it to however you want. Soundstage. Soundstage of the FH9 really took me by surprise because I was like, it's semi-open. It's going to be a very wide stage. Not so fast. Um, it has a very accurate reproduction of a stage. It does a good job of keeping things within realism. If it's a small, intimate stage, it's going to sound like that. If it's a wider, larger stage, it's going to sound like that. It does really good with depth and also does a good job with layering of instruments. It's a very accurate sound stage and it, does, it has a good amount of openness and airiness to it without sounding too stretched or unrealistic. Again, unless you use the treble filter. The treble filter does add wideness to the stage 
but it also stretches things a little too much and it becomes a little thin and it just sounds unnatural. Whereas the balanced and the bass filters do a better job. The bass filter will be a little bit more intimate sounding and the balanced one, in my opinion, sounds the most accurate. Imaging is very good. You can follow things across the stage. There's no gaps and no skippings or whatsoever. No three blob here. This is a very flowing and accurate uh, image. You can take something from one side and follow it all the way across the room. And it does a good job being accurate. You can pinpoint things. You can be like, it's right there. It's right there. Also does a very good job with detail retrieval and resolution. The details, you're not going to miss anything. They're all there. And you're never going to have to be hunting and finding and go, why didn't I hear that? Where is it? It is there. Also, resolving wise, it does a very good job. And everything is well defined. And I can't really complain about the FH9. It's just a good, solid IEM. And I really do enjoy it. Comparisons. This is going to be the one thing that's a little different for me because we're in a price point that I haven't explored much. And I've kind of gone $300, $400, and then I skip, go to $1,000 and above. I haven't really touched about the $400 to $1,000 price point much. And so I don't really have anything to compare it to. Well, luckily, Dan's Audio Reviews just lended me two IEMs. The Thea Audio Clairvoyance and the Tantrum Prism. Now, those just came in a couple of days ago, so I do not have a whole lot of time listening on them. But I'm going to give you a very brief comparison to the FH9 for those two. Full reviews will be coming. So let's start with the Tantrum Prism. Now, the Tantrum Prism are definitely brighter and more aggressive in their presentation. Bass wise is more sub bass, not quite as much emphasis on the mid bass and upper bass. So it's more of a, a detailed focused bass than the uh, FH9 is a little bit more full and engaging and impactful and has all the details, but the Tantrum has more details instead of quantity. Mids are thinner but more forward and brighter on the tantrum. And then treble is definitely hotter and more aggressive. It is a way more bright sounding of an IEM. Soundstage is wider on the prism. Depth is not as deep. Imaging, detail retrieval, and resolution are pretty similar. Going to the clairvoyance. The clairvoyance is a step up from the FH9 in some regards. I do believe that the clairvoyance has better tone and timbre. It is a little bit more controlled in its mids and treble presentation. It's not quite as peaky, even though it does have more. It is a little bit more elevated, but it is more controlled and more refined. Soundstage is a little bit wider on to clairvoyance, depth is better and layering is better. Detail retrieval and resolution is slightly better on the clairvoyance. Bass is more sub bass focused, but also has a little bit better detail retrieval and resolution. Overall, I do find tone and timbre to be slightly better on the clairvoyance. So the FH9, I like this. It's a fun, engaging IEM. And it is the best video that I've ever heard. It's been Dave, the Honest Audiophile. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of the next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links, notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Then don't forget to check out the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you can contact the channel, follow the channel, support the channel. All that kind of stuff is down below. Gear recommendations, tier list, music. All kinds of stuff is listed down below. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. It's been Dave, the Honest Audio File. Don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.